So here we're going to look at another example of finding the determinant of a matrix, and we're going to put that matrix into triangular form. In particular, I'm going to put mine into upper triangular form. So a couple things, um, again, just to recall you what we're, you know, sort of where we're going. I'm starting with some matrix. My goal is to ultimately um, either put it in upper triangular or lower triangular form. And the idea is we can focus at those entries along the main diagonal. And again, what I either want to do, I either want to make the values below that main diagonal zero, or I want to make the values above that main diagonal zero. Either one is fine. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose to make those lower entries zero. And when we do that, we call it upper triangular. And once we do that, the idea is once we have it in that form, we can simply multiply the elements along the main diagonal to find the determinant. One important word, uh, a, a word of caution, there's it is possible because we are so we're doing row operations it's certainly possible to change the value of the determinant one of my examples um, the value of the determinant in, did not change and that's because we just used this last um, result heavily so if you add a multiple of one row to another that's not going to change the value of the determinant However, if you swap two rows, it's going, it's going to change the sign of the determinant. And if you scale a row, so if you multiply it by some uh, non-zero constant, it's going to multiply the determinant by that non-zero constant as well. So we just need to keep these in mind. But otherwise, let's go. Let's try to put it into uh, upper triangular form. So to start, I'm going to focus in on this first column. And... Okay, so I'm thinking about the main diagonal. So that, that one is along the main diagonal. I want zeros underneath it. Well, I've already got a zero in that second row, so that's good. So I'm gonna get a zero in the third row and also in the fourth row. Let's work on that third row first. So it looks like to me, I think we could simply take I think we could take two times our first row and simply add that to the third row to get our new third row. So if we do that, I'm going to leave the first row alone. One, four, eight, ten. I'm going to leave the second row alone. So that's zero, three, negative two, and one. Now let's perform this row operation. So if I take, if I take, race here. So if I take 2 times 1 and add to that negative 2, that's going to give me 0. 2 times 4 is 8 plus negative 8. It's going to be another 0. So hey, bonus prize. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16. 16 minus 4 is 12. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 plus 0 is just going to be 20. Okay, so let's clean up here a little bit. So that gives me my new third row. Let's go ahead and do two operations, uh, two row operations, because we said we also need to get a zero in that bottom left corner as well. And I think that one will be a little easier because there I think we can just take our first row and add it to our fourth row to get our new fourth row. Okay, so we're just adding one plus negative one, that's zero, four plus two, that's six, 8 plus 1, that's 9. 10 plus 2, that's 12. And now I think uh, we've, we've dealt with that, <clears throat> with that first column. We've put it in that good form. And notice our row operations that we did. Nothing changed the determinant because, again, all we did was just use this adding a multiple of one row to another. Okay, so now I go to the second column, and I just play the same game. I look at the element along the main diagonal. That's a 3. And again, I'm just thinking that I want zeros everywhere beneath it. That's my, you know, my mechanical goal in life. Well, I've already got a 0 here. That's great. So I just need to get a 0 where that 6 is. Well, I, could th I think I can take, if I take negative 2 times the second row and add to that my fourth row and make that my new fourth row, again, I think we'll be in, in business here. 
So let's see if we can't fit it in here. So I'm going to leave the first row alone, 1, 4, 8, and 10. I'm leaving the second row alone, too, 0, 3, negative 2, and 1. Third row is staying the same, 0, 0, 12, and 20. Now, this is where we're going to do our row operation. This is where we're going to do our, whoops, our row operation. So I'm just going to do negative 2 times the second row and add to that the fourth row. So negative 2 times 0 plus 0, that's still just going to be 0. 2 times 3, excuse me, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 6 is 0. And again, that's what we wanted. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 plus 9, that's 13. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 12 is going to be 10. Okay, so we're getting closer, getting closer here. So we almost have it in the form that we need. It looks like the only thing uh, left to do, so I'm, again, just looking along this main diagonal, the only element that's left to, to make into a zero is that 13. So I'm thinking, how could I do that? And there's actually a couple different ways you could do it. Um, Notice, for example, one way I could do it, I think, and I go, okay, let's even just do it this way. I think the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to take, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one twelfth of that third row and make that my new third row. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to be able to make this element into a one and once that's a 1, I'll be able to do some row operations to make that into a 13. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'll be good to go. So that's that's my thought process. And again, there's, there's many ways you can do these. I'm just, again, trying to do it really slowly, a step at a time. So first row alone, second row, leaving it alone. Now I'm going to change my third row. So dividing everything by 12. So I would have 20 over 12. Well, I think we can divide both of those by, by 4. So 20 divided by uh, 4 is going to be 5. 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3. And I'm leaving the last row alone for now because all I wanted to do was just make my third row into a good form. Now, I'm going to box this one in or circle it or something because... Now I have changed the value of the determinant because I've scaled a row, right? So we'll have to come back to this one because I have changed the value um, of the determinant through these row operations. Okay, so I think we're almost there. Almost there. So again, all I want is this 13 to turn into a zero. I think I can take negative 13 times the third row and add to that my fourth row to make my new fourth row. And then I think we're almost, almost finito. So again, if you do have to do these by hand, my consolations, um, you will get faster the quicker, you know, you'll get quicker the more you do, obviously. Do be careful, there's a ton of arithmetic, as you can see. But hopefully, I mean, you certainly don't wanna do these by hand in general, but it is nice to do a couple to see. Okay, so let's perform this last row operation. So negative 13 times 0 plus 0, that's just 0. Negative 13 times 0 plus 0, just 0. Negative 13 times 1 is negative 13 plus 13 is 0. That's what we wanted. And then I've got negative 13 times 5 thirds. And I have to add to that 10. And that's what I'm going to get in that bottom right corner. All right, well, let's do this real quick. So that's just going to be negative 65 over 3. I can write 10 as 30 over 3. That's going to be negative 35 over 3. So that's just negative 35 over 3. So we'll just move that off to the side there. All right, so now we're almost done because we now have it in this upper triangular form, and that's good. So that's sort of the first, you know, realization that we need to make is that we do have it in triangular form. 
And now let's simply define the determinant of this matrix. So the determinant And again, of this matrix, it's not going to be the original one because we're going to have to uh, modify it. But again, I would just take those, those elements and multiply them. So 1 times 3 times 1 times negative 35 over 3. So this one after the row operations, that has a determinant of negative 35. Well, again, the only row operation that changed our determinant was when we divided everything by 12 on that third row. And we said that does the same thing to the determinant. So it says I, did, I actually d took the determinant of A. I took the determinant of my original matrix, and we divided it by 12. So to recover it, I must simply multiply it by 12. So it says the determinant of that original matrix is negative 420. And again, the, the notation, we can put that matrix A. It looks like it's an absolute value. Um, the determinant of that matrix, again, is equal to negative 420.